Uh, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, yeah. So if you've been on this channel, you know we talk about upcoming anime fighting games a lot. A lot of different arena fighters and a lot of things associated with just punching. I am a huge fan of Sonic the Hedgehog. I've played almost every Sonic game at least multiple probably to three to five times. And since Sonic Colors Ultimate is right around the corner, I was like, hey yo, this might be the perfect time to start this series and to get people hype about it, something I really love. I think I finally wanna look back to my childhood, Sonic back. Can I get y'all a little story time before we go into this, I right. It was the Christmas. I was sneaking into the living room of Christmas Eve, thirsting, fiending for this game. And legit, I committed a sin. My grandmother had created this Christmas Eve rule, and this was the first time she ever implemented this rule, which is why I felt so bad. The rule was where we can open one present on Christmas Eve, and the other ones had to be opened on Christmas Day. So my thirsty ass was like, I would maybe if I open this soon and she put the Christmas tree up, right? She wouldn't know I already opened it or one present was always missing. TLDR, if you want to know what happened, just know I got my ass hooked, but she kept the Christmas Eve eve rule going all right so there's that today we're talking about sonic battle for the game boy advance sonic battle released in 2003 in japan and in november 2004 in northern america literally localization is trash <laughs> i didn't care back then because i didn't think of it but uh, that's a doing the game was developed by obviously sonic team with yuji naka producing i'm going to come out and say it this might be one of the most underrated fighting games to come from the Sonic franchise or potentially just a handheld gaming period. I mean, Sonic legit only has two official fighting games and Lord, as goofy as this game is, I don't want to talk about it for now. So Sonic Battle for at the time legit has a lot of modes and content in it. Like Sonic Battle came out in 2003 in Japan for a GBA game. This is massively impressive and it's doing better than most fighting games on next gen consoles. Honestly, with the variety of content it has. Dude, the only thing this game is actually ironically missing is having online, which at the time it was not common for fighting games or many video games to have online components. It was just starting. Then I did some research. I had to go back because I always beat it to fight games, but I also had to go look into the history of EVO. That's how I got into it. So the major fighting games of EVO 2003 were Street Fighter Third Strike, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Soul Calibur 2, which compared to Sonic Battle is a hard shoes to fill in. It's like hard to compare Sonic Battle to those three, but Sonic Battle literally could have been super big if it just wasn't on the Game Boy Advance in my opinion. Think about it, during the time we just had Sonic Adventure 1 and Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic Advance 2, and Sonic Mega Collection. Imagine if this game was made for consoles, bro. The early FGC and Sonic fans would have been like, so I remember faintly that this game was a mixed bag for a lot of people for various different reasons. So I remember being or having a fun but hard time in the story mode. So I decided, all right, this game been living rent free all my life and I legit wanted to see for myself how I felt about the game. Looking at this in 2021 with my arena fighter expertise, I like to say, I have to say that this game does a lot of hype, a lot of things right and a few little areas being flawed. So let's talk about the 3D arena fighter stages in Sonic Battle. I legit love every stage in this game, dog. Every stage, each stage is vibrant, has its own design to it, and they all of them being super unique. The problem I have with the stages is that when fighting and moving around a lot, you can't always see everyone besides maybe the little reticle. I'm playing this on a big screen emulated in 2021, but on the Game Boy Advance, thinking about getting smacked full screen out of nowhere, probably would tilt me today. Back then I didn't care because I was like, ooh, Sonic Punch. Like that's how my brain was. <laughs> I think if they tried this again, they would have to adapt a arena format since it can be 2v2 in the battle mode or free for all. Thinking about something similar to like J-Stars maybe, or oh, no, or maybe Gundam. Oh my God, Sonic Gundam sounds freaking phenomenal. Oh no though, that's what I'm just gonna just go with with that. <laughs> what makes Sonic Battle unique? Even though I got done talking about what I dislike with Sonic Battle, Let's talk about the most unique, weird, but creative aspect of Sonic Battle. Sprites on a 3D plane. This might be one of the most unique arena fighters that have ever released actually. Heck, most arena fighters in 2021 are all 3D on giant 3D fields. This game hits my heart with love in both ways. So if you know my taste for Arsenal Works games, it always was 2D sprites. 
There's something about sprite work that I really love. I'm just nostalgic about it. It just, it just, it got me what you know about love, man. I love it. I'm like that with Pokemon sometimes too. Pokemon big that Gen 5 and I'm not going to argue with anybody. All right, look, look I'm going to stop. I'm gonna leave y'all load. You know what? Think of Chowder, where like every time they walk, the patterns of the clothes changes or moves. It's just that interesting to me to see interesting little concepts and ideas come to life, entertainment, period, and more importantly, in video games that I'm probably gonna run across in my lifetime. Sonic Battle Mechanics. So now we're talking about the mechanics of Sonic Battle. The game being on the Game Boy Advance, again, can insinuate that it is limited to combat. However, Sonic Team fall a little bit beyond that. I mean, if you look at the Game Boy Advance, you can easily see that the handheld only had a D-pad, four buttons, two being A and B, but also L and R. Also, Sonic Battle's playable roster is on a smaller size for a party game. But then again, the Game Boy Advance, all right, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> Sonic Battle has 10 playable characters. If the game came out today, Twitter, yo, y'all would have been going crazy. Regardless, Every character is unique, and I love how unique every character is. Like Rouge, if this game was competitively made, I would try to learn her just to be different besides probably Shadow, I don't know. I just like the kick move she has. The only character I dislike in this game playing was Chaos. He didn't feel good to me at all. When I was younger, I was overhyping him to hell. Now I'm older, I'm like his moveset just not my taste for this type of game. One of the most important things to find out if an arena fighter is fun, in my opinion, is by looking at the game's movement. Most of the best arena fighters on the market have incredibly fun movement, and Sonic Battle Stray is no different. Everyone moves at a normal pace on the screen. If you double tap forward, you do a big dash that almost goes across the full map and screen. What's pretty cool about it is that you could also act out of it and hit someone if you see them. So you do have abilities to be offensive with the move and probably be a defensive if you're low on health for trying to hit someone. Wait, wait, wait. I you gonna skip over Emerald and the story though? Huh. <sighs> Listen, I like Sonic Battle story, but replaying it legitimately is so straightforward, I could not pass the chance to do Hey y'all, hey, y'all, y'all, summary. summary. Alright, so Sonic Battle story goes like this. Juro Robotnik found a Gizoid. That shit stayed dormant for years until Eggman found it. Eggman found it and realized it was broke. Eggman didn't want to play with it anymore, so then he just threw it on the My Hero Academia beach. Sonic and friends became cool with it, and then Sonic named it Emerald. And on the way, he learned how to throw hands. Now Eggman wants it back. Eggman pissed it off and went out of control, and now Sonic had to finish off Emerald like Goku finished off Kid Buu back in the Majin Buu saga. To be honest, the story is like super simple anime OVA. This might be better than most traditional fighting game stories. Like at least you know the central plot, then you got everyone interacting with it. Emerald, which is clear. Like Shadow was like, oh hell no, not again. Every time he thinks about Emerald, he go crazy. He about to pull out the Glock in his Rory. Back to the gameplay right quick. Emerald is super mid when you first turn the game on. I was like, hey yo, what the hell is this? When I played him again, then I realized that through the story mode you could customize him, but like, don't bring him multiplayer. He's super broken. He not fun to fight against. So remember how I said on the surface that the gameplay is super simple? The Sonic team fought against that? Well, before the battle starts and before the player re-enters the battle, after being KO'd, they are able to select from three different special attacks. Shot, Power, and Trap. Shot attacks are mid to long range attacks, which can be directed in any of the eight directions. Besides the broken the hedgehog, power attacks are typically signature attacks of the character and vary between each character. These attacks normally focus a lot on damage in one go. Trap attacks involve the character placing or releasing an explosive device, which launches the opponent upward and briefly blinds anyone on hit. Yo, you wanna learn how to do a fucking infinite light punch, medium punch, light kick, heavy punch. Ground is the basic special attack. This is used when the character is on the ground. Aerial is a variant of a special attack used while the character is in the air and is often an air to air round attack. Aerial is a variant of a special attack used when the character is in the air and is often an air to ground attack. The special attack selected as guard automatically protects you from opponents moves in the same category. For example, if guard is on shot, all shot moves are automatically blocked until you die and reset your guard. I think if this game was taken seriously, I could see the importance of finding characters with strong different special attacks. I can also see Emerald being banned because of strong customs, and I can see everyone using Shadow, Sonic, Tails, and Meta. The guard system in this game kind of reminds me of like 
picking bands in like League of Legends or other games similar to that. But like you have to learn how to play the game when somebody bans something that's either too strong or they just don't want to deal with. So that's pretty cool. It's like it adds a layer of depth to the game that I didn't think most games like this would ever have. Oh yeah, Sonic Battle has this pretty much like hard knockback attack where you can knock your opponent into the wall and then chase them down. Think about like a Guilty Gear Dusk or just some type of like all out attack from Persona 4 Arena. That's pretty cool. I really like that a lot in this game. Cause you can also play a lot of neutral to run. At least in my mind, there's ways to avoid it and not get hold by it. I've gotten beat out of it by the CPU before. What's also pretty cool about Sonic Battle is that you can heal yourself by holding down the L button, which is also called the Ichikoro Gauge. I look at what it meant and it's kind of badass because it's saying like beating somebody down. What's really nice is that you do have a way to shift your camera around by double tapping. But because if you get hit, you can dang near get hit into an ultimate or die in one hit. Yeah, that green bar, it fully gives you access to an ultimate attack. And for flashing and you hit someone, you legit one hit KO them. If you die, you lose. If you miss, you will also lose the one hit KO attack. I mean, yeah, the one hit KO attack just seems very overpowered. But I think if you have a specific guard selected, you remain that move useless until they die. Which is kind of crazy because it's like, dang, I could just kill you, but not if I have my trap card. I think it's a good comeback mechanic because like, if you're playing lives or first to five or ten kills, you literally can just get a guaranteed win if you know what you're doing towards the end of the match. But then again, like I just stated a couple seconds ago, there is some depth to it. My final verdict on everything that I can do in the game I can't play mini games without actual friends 2021. Yes, this game actually has Sonic Battle mini games, which is pretty cool. You got more ways to play the game than just beat people up. All right, so, some of y'all like to complain about that stuff. But I think that Sonic Battle is either really underrated and I'm upset we didn't get a sequel. I think if anything, I like to criticize about Sonic Team or Sega is that they just move on from project to project, which honestly, for a business move, it's pretty smart, however. Like, why would you invest into something that wasn't making bread and you just only not making money? But in Sonic games, pretty much all Sonic games generally do somewhat decent, I believe. Until I did some research. Then I was like, hold up, that's kind of cat. Sonic Boom apparently sold less than a mil. Like, I believe it got two games. Sega, you better give me a Sonic Battle 2 on Switch, PS5, something in the future, man. I'm spinning right now because <laughs> I'm that angry. But even though from the wiki, it seems like Sonic Battle did really mad compared to Sonic Advance total like 1.5 million on the platform. And the best selling Game Boy Advance game period was 16 million, which was Pokemon. That's high, but like there's been games even after those generations that sell could triple that, bro. So again, I think the game has its problems, but it came out at the wrong time. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching my first retrospective on fighting games and Sonic Battle. I generally do enjoy this game. It's a little dated, but it still got, got a lot of promise to it. You know what I'm saying? I'm planning on doing anime games and fighting games as well if this does well. This video can get like 100 likes. Oh, you know what? I'll lowball like 80 likes. I pretty much love that. And I'll work on the next one at the end of the month. Also, if you guys would like to subscribe to the channel as well and hit the bell and turn on all notifications to get every upload from me so you'll never miss a video like this ever again, unless YouTube breaks, then all be it, that's that. Also, thank you guys for the support recently. I haven't been really in the best mindset when it comes to content creation and this year, honestly, but I'm trying. And thank y'all for supporting me as much as well. It's your boy Avatar Yaya. Follow me on Twitter at Avatar Yaya underscore because that's my new Twitter. My last Twitter got smacked. And remember, you guys are golden and that is raw. Squala! I've been a devil, I need me a hawk and I'm one of my breathing, I feel well like time's raw Walking this bitch with a zomp, I don't wanna let you rock it, I keep me a domino Ay. Bitch, I'm a dip and I feel like a Zaki Stretching that pussy out like it's Pilates I'm stashing the soul out right out of a body Fire, I'm spitting, I feel well like Dobby White bitch, blonde hair, looking like Lucy She from Kiyoshi, I paint her face suki